On this slide, we record some remarks on Czech cohomology. So the first remark is, the zeroth cohomology group is equal to the global sections on the space. So if you calculate the zeroth cohomology groups, it is equal to the global section. So first, let us write down this chain of check complexes. We have T1 here, D2 here, and so on. So what is it corresponding? sheaf looks like you have f of ui precisely like we had the sheaf on the circle s1 so here you have fixed the topological space x and you have a cover of it by these sets u1 u2 u3 u4 and so on so what is h0 so h0 is nothing but kernel of the map d1 over image of this zero which is just zero so kernel of D1 modulo 0 is kernel of D1. Now what are the elements which are 0 in D1? The elements which are 0 in D1 are precisely of the form Si minus Sj equals to 0 on Ui intersection Uj. Now this is precisely how we did it in the circle toy example. So you have these two elements Si, Sj coming from Ui and Sj comes from Uj. On the intersection, you have Si minus Sj. Now to notice the sign, you can say that uh, J is less than I. So Si is Sj hat I. Since the zero index is missing, J is at zero index, I is at one index. You have minus one raised to the power of zero, Si, J is less than I. So the elements lying in kernel of D1 are precisely those elements which agree on the intersection. So the sections agree on the intersection of ui and uj. So somehow it looks like this. You have set ui, you have uj, and you have the intersection. You have section si, sj, and they agree here. So you basically ca can glue these sections together to get the global sections. So basically any two sections which agree on the intersection, you glue them together to get the global section. And that is how you get the global section from the zeroth cohomology groups. You take the elements of the kernel which agree on the intersection, glue them together and you get the global section. The second important point is the check cohomology commutes with direct sums. So let us see this. So you have direct sum inside, say you have, have these sheaves fj where j is an element of some index set j and this direct sum comes out. Now there is nothing special about it, it just follows from the definition of check cohomology. So this basically carries over because the direct sum also comes out in the check complex. So you have this check complex. J is element of J, FJ. This direct sum just comes out. Now I will just write down the toy example of first one F of UI. Say you're talking about group C0. Yeah. So for C0, you have something like this. You have i instead of f of ui. Now we have a direct sum here. And so, yeah, you can look at the complex which I have already drawn. And this direct sum comes out. And so for c1 or c0, you can see that it directly splits out. And this naturally carries over to the maps again to understand everything here what is happening is you have to completely understand the toy example of a circle and this everything else just falls into place so the kernel map carries over to each index so this map instead of one map you have multiple of these maps for each index i or each index j i should say yeah so you have one map d one say 
J1, J2, J3. So you have multiple of these maps, maps. Now again, we have fixed the topological space X. We have a OX module. We want to define a sheaf F, which we have already defined. But what we are saying here is OX module is a K vector space. So this sheaf is also naturally a K vector space. Yeah, so you have fixed a topological space X, you have a bunch of sets which cover it, and then this intersection of those sets, you have the sheaf on it, which is a naturally a K vector space. Now the last important point is the functoriality. So we have three categories from which we pass on from one to another. The first one is say category A of sheaves and morphisms. So there are two sheaves and we have morphisms between them. From here, you can pass on to another category B, say which is complexes and their morphisms. So you have these complexes, the check complexes you could form. So check complex from I, C, U, F to the ith part, C, I, U, G. And then from there, we can pass on to another complex which is groups and group homomorphisms. So we have these cohomology groups associated with sheaf F and then you have cohomology groups associated with sheaf G. Again, the U here is nothing but the cover of the topological space X. So U is a bunch of sets. 